In the last couple of weeks, we've begun our confirmation program here, faith formation and also confirmation and faith formation and also in the school. And it's a two-year program. Our students are able to get confirmed at eighth grade or, or later. We've switched that up last year, so we moved it up a little bit. But I love the confirmation program. And one of my favorite things to the confirmation program is actually year two near the end when I'm able to interview uh, the candidates for confirmation. I love it. Now, it's not something they always love, by the way, a one-on-one -on -one interview uh, with the pastor. But the reason that I like it is because I'm able to get to know these uh, candidates even better and to see kind of the, the growth that they've had over the last year and a half or so. They've dived into the relationship with God and also what they're looking forward to, not only for confirmation, but after confirmation, now as a fully initiated uh, Catholic. Like, how are they going to continue uh, to live out this faith? The other part I love about confirmation is actually going to the sacrament of confirmation, either at the basilica or the cathedral. And during that time, the bishop actually asks the candidates questions. Now, when they hear that, they go, are they going to ask me the se what the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit are or the seven fruits or all that? And the answer is no. Instead, what the bishop will ask is, do you reaffirm your faith in the Catholic faith? Do you reaffirm the belief? And so they ask them those questions, the same questions that were probably asked to their parents when they presented this child to be baptized. We know these questions, right? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? There's three of those questions, and each one they say, I do. And so what are they doing? They are affirming their faith that this is not only what I believe, but this is now how I am going to live as a fully initiated Catholic. That they're saying yes. But you and I know that words mean nothing without actions. That it's not only that yes then, but it has to be a yes every single day of their life, of our life, not only in words, but in our actions. We see this today in the gospel, by the way. The father comes to the two sons and asks them to work in the vineyard. The first one says, I will not. That should shock us right there, by the way. It says, I will not. But afterwards, changes his mind and goes out and works. He comes to the other son, and he said in reply, yes, sir, I'm going right now. And then kept on playing his Xbox or whatever else it may be. He did not go out. Which one did the Father's will? Once again, this shows it's not about the words. It's about our actions. Let's use one other quick example before we move on. So I think it's even more profound, especially for most of you, as you're in this vocation of marriage. You go back to the day of your marriage, you go back to the day of the vows that you say, I, Joseph, take you, Mary, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and bad and sickness and health, to love and to honor you all the days of my life. Meanwhile, all the ladies are crying in the pews because it's such a beautiful statement that you are saying, and you've said these vows, and they're beautiful, and then the next day, you don't live it out at all. And you never say, I love you again, and you never, ever, ever are truly faithful. Words mean nothing without actions. And this is true in our faith life as well. Every single Sunday we come and we profess the creed, I believe. We say amen, we say amen when we, amen when we hear the words, the body of Christ. But if we leave here and don't live it out, then are we truly meaning yes? It's hard sometimes. It's hard to always live for God. The world wants to bring us another way. And if the Lord is saying, come to me, I desire you. And he is there 
to help. Maybe right now we're stuck in wickedness. Maybe right now we're not actually been working in the vineyard. And so we've been working in, in sin. Well, let's go back to our first reading then from the prophet Ezekiel. This is one of my favorite readings because it's telling us how merciful God is, but also how just he is. He says, when someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. So what should that tell us? That being virtuous is not just a one-time thing. It's the same for confirmation. It's the same for marriage. It's the same for priesthood. It's not just yes once but must be every single day of our life. But maybe we've turned away from the Lord. This is what he says. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. This is what the Lord is always inviting us to do. Not only to turn away from sin, but to turn towards him, who is love who is mercy, and to focus on him. And so that every single Sunday, yes, we come and say yes to him, but then when we leave these doors, we must truly make him our focus, him our goal, him our prize. To use that, that old cliche, right? Keep your eye on the prize. But what is our prize? You know, there's ways we can examine this. It's good to examine who or what are we truly living for. Are we living to make more money, a bigger house? Are we living to win our fantasy football league? Are we winning to grow up and, and, and continue to move that corporate world ladder, right? Maybe our prize is so that we have everyone liking us, no matter what, so we are always agreeable even though we know that maybe they're in sin or we're in sin. Maybe that's what our prize is, a reputation. But that doesn't give us fulfillment. We know this. Only God does. And so we must keep our eye on the prize of God and that prize of eternal life. And that will help us to make, make our yes mean yes and our no mean no. You know, a couple years ago, I ran across a quote from St. Benedict. St. Benedict was kind of the, the, the father figure of the, the monastery movement. He, was, he went out to the, the desert, actually went up to the top of a hill in Italy, Mount Cassino, and kind of lived an aesthetic life of prayer, but also work. And people were attracted to this. They said, we too want to join your community. So that's how the Benedictine community began. So there's also something called the rule of St. Benedict. That he put these rules together for people to kind of live their life, especially those who are, who are monks, but also for us. And it came from the rule of St. Benedict, chapter 4. And I read it on retreat, and ever since I've had a copy of this rule in my Bible that I look at daily. It says this. Fear the day of judgment. Dread hell. That will wake you up, by the way. Desire eternal life with all your soul. Keep the memory of death daily before your eyes. That is a sobering message. We've all experienced it before. Where someone we love or someone we know passes away suddenly. And what does it do? It shakes us to our core. So we can't help but think, could that be me? Am I ready? Am I ready to go home to the Lord? It's shocking. But St. Benedict says, this is something that we should keep in front of us always. Keeping that eye on the prize all the time. Not putting off to go, growing deeper into our faith life for another day or another month, or till Lent, until next year. But to do it now, why? Well, because God is the one who will give us fulfillment. God is the one who gives us eternal life. And when we keep that in mind, 
it'll make saying yes to him not only easier, but motivating as well. Not just with our words, but in our actions as well. So my brothers and sisters, I know it's a little bit of a sobering message this morning, but that's okay. So when you leave here today, you have to be thinking, okay, who am I living for? Am I living for the Lord or not? We say yes that we are today in the creed, but when we leave here with God's help, let us live it out by our actions as well.